Good morning, YouTube. This is Jason, aka Bit Junkie. Hope this video finds you doing well. Um, this is going to be the first uh, market watch video I've done. So we're we're trading the stock market, as I told you in the last video. Um, it's about 9:02 a.m. So by the time this video comes out, the market will probably be open. Um, but I just wanted to take a look and kind of give my thoughts. Um, what we have here in front of us is the spy. So this is uh, the S&P 500 chart this is the weekly chart um, all of the trades that I'm looking at are kind of angled towards a sale and the reason why is um, if you look at the the last move this leg right here from where the cursor is to down here this is the last move that we had that started on December 3rd and bottomed out um, it looks like around December uh, 24th it was Christmas Eve and so we've been in a retrace for three weeks. We've been coming back up. But if, if you look at this move, um, the risk reward ratio is getting really, really small. And what I mean by that is it's easier to take a buy down here because you have a lot of room before a lot of the sellers are going to enter back into the market to push the market back down. Not saying that the market's going to come down from here, but it's more likely that it's going to reverse and come down. Um, we can talk about Fibonacci later, but um, historically, when there's a when there's a large move in the market, there's a certain retracement that the market's going to do, and then the sellers are or the buyers, depending on which direction. In this case, it would be the sellers because the market came down long way. Um, it's retraced back up. It's already retraced more than 50% of the direction back against the original move, and just the odds, the probability is higher here for selling. Than it is that it's going to push up and make a new high and i guess i can take this point to take this time to kind of uh give a little advice but you know what let's let's, let's look at some of the other charts too um one thing that's pretty constant with a lot of the uh etfs and index funds they trade in tandem there's a little bit of correlation they're not exactly alike but they're very similar so we can look at um the qqq which is a nasdaq 100. it's a similar chart um, it's not exactly the same, but if you were to put a fib on this to see how large the retracement is um, on there, that one's actually retraced almost 61% back against its, its move. So it's come a little bit further back, which is typically a, an area where the sellers re-enter the market and push it down. And the thing about this is, is there's no guarantee that the market's going to push down and make a new low. That's not really what it means. It means that you're, if you're going to buy, you want to buy closer to the bottom. And if you're and if you're in a buy position, it's probably, you know, a good time to maybe um, lighten your trade, exit some of your position, take some profits because you're, you're entering to a zone where you don't really know what's going to happen next. And that's as a trader. That's your your job is to understand probability. It's not so much about predicting the market. You know, investors predict the market. Um, you look at a company's competitive advantage within its segment. Uh, you look at its P&E, you look at its ownership, you look at all those those fundamental aspects. And that trumps a lot of the technical stuff. But that's that's really what you're going to get. And as a matter of fact, let's um, let's let's do an example and talk about it. So my bias for the market, I have. Uh, uh, I think I have I have several trades that are triggered into zones and I'm looking for sales, not to say that. It's going to go down, but I wouldn't buy. I don't have anything on my list for buying right now. As a matter of fact, let me pull up my watch list. All right, so this is my watch list. I'm. I tried to export this to Excel so I could count how many stocks I'm watching, um, but it came out as a text file, and I, and I still would have had to manually count them. And I've been too lazy to count them. But I think there's 80 stocks on here, and um, you'll notice there's different tags next to them. Um, the blue ones mean that I'm in a trade in that one. Uh, the yellow means that it's there's been a polarity change in the direction of the market on that stock. And then the red list are ones where I can enter orders into. Now, I'm not going to show you that because it shows the entries and exits. And I need to brush up on what I'm allowed to show. And I don't want to guide you that way. This is more of a fundamental. Um, my, my fundamental idea or analysis of the market and what I think is going to happen. So my bias is more to the downside. Um, at this point. So let's, let's go to a daily chart. And you say to me, hey, man, the market's been going up since the Christmas Eve. Well, markets get tired. 
And there's a cycle to markets. There's a reason why markets go up and go down. And um, there's a there's a consistent cycle that happens over and over and over again. But the probabilities we'll, we'll get into that in later videos. I'm going to be making videos every couple of days. So we'll, we'll talk about a lot of different stuff. But um, typically. Uh, the market is the longer it goes in one direction, the closer it is to turning around. You know, like a, a morbid, maybe really bad example, but this is the best thing I can think of is like every day you live, you're closer to the day that you actually die. Right. And that's kind of messed up. But that's the, it's the same thing. The market's going to go up, but every day it goes up, it's closer to the time that it turns around. So the later you are to the party, the more likely and the, the less the odds are on your favor. So the your job as a trader is to put the odds on your side. Right. So. Um, all right. So we'll take that. So that's that's my bias. Uh, overall market. I mean, there's individual stocks. And I don't think we're going to get into individual stocks. I don't think that'd be a productive way to do this. Um, but as far as the markets in general, this is the Nasdaq 100 um, spy, which is the S&P. Um, both of them, I'm looking for shorts right now. So uh, that's where I'm at. Um, so a lot of you out there, I wanted to give some information for people that can help you. All right. So let me uh, minimize my watch list. All right. So let's, uh, let's zoom out a little bit. All right. So this is the this is the monthly chart for the S&P 500. OK. And a lot of times people, they want to use moving averages and uh, figure out um, what's the direction, what's the trend, trade with the trend, the trend's your friend. That's what that's what you're told. Right. That's important. But first, you need to decide what are you? Are you an investor or are you a trader? Investors care about prediction and most large institutional um, participants are, are investors and investors have so much money that they're moving. They can't put all of their funds. I mean, and large investment funds range anywhere from, you know, several million dollars to hundreds of billions of dollars. And. You, you can't enter into positions all at one time. So you have to scale into your position, which is where trends come from. You need the market to go up, come down, go up, come down. And when it goes down, you buy the dip. That's where the saying comes from. Those investors, they buy the dip because they can't they have to scale into their positions because their their position sizes are so large. OK, but always remember the price on the chart is the collective opinion of a value of an asset. OK, everybody that's in the market participating, what we value the price at shows up in the price and you can't hide from the price. So um, you have to determine if you want to be an investor, then maybe you should have a longer term approach and following the trend is probably the better way to go. If you're a trader, trend matters, but it's more about market polarity and what is the, the direction of the market in the time frame that I am trying to trade. It's more important. So let's let's take a look at this chart, for example. Um, let me see if I can get some lines going. All right. So you can clearly see. Um, let's uh, zoom out a little bit more. I guess we could use this one. Uh, let's let's use this. I don't use uh, the, this type of trend line um, personally, but I think it can make a point. All right. So this trend line tells you that the S&P was going up right at a certain angle. At this point right here. The the angle became steeper. Right. All of it up direction steeper. This has this has no bearing for you intraday. This is a monthly chart. So I know obviously this isn't something that's going to help you intraday. But my point is, if someone asks you, what is the trend of the market? The trend is up, up, up. I mean, you can say it broke here recently, but it's been up. Right. But what about these two months where the price went down? How about where, the, where it peaked here in May and went down and made new lows all the way through August? You know, and then it reversed and it didn't make a new high and it came back down for you. If you're just following the trend, you either a would have had no trade to make or you would have been wrong buying into a bunch of selling pressure. So as an investor holding this stock, yeah, that would have been a great thing. It's, it continues to go up um, as a, as a trader. You want to 
trade with the direction of the market. Now, you say, well, why are we looking at a monthly chart? Well, it depends on your time horizon. What I do now is I trade off of a weekly chart mostly, and I enter my trades based on a daily chart. And using that strategy, the monthly chart matters to me because levels of price trump price direction. And there's a there's a cyclical nature to the market. Um, I feel like I'm scattered in trying to explain what I'm trying to do. Um, but um, let me see if I can find a better example. Let me get into a, a specific side. Let's look at Walgreens. I was looking at Walgreens earlier. OK. Uh, another another tip for traders out there. Um, you use a lot of moving averages. You're trying to turn determine the direction. You know, the easiest way to determine the direction. Drop your time frame down and zoom out. It, it always tell you, <laughs> you know, you can use a moving average to tell you this and it works on any time frame. You know, if you're if you're working intraday and you want to know, hey, what's the market direction? You know, just zoom out of your on your chart. Just zoom out. And it, then it becomes very easy. You don't need a moving average to tell you that this thing was going up and it's made a drastic move down. That's pretty self-explanatory. You, you don't need any moving average. Less clutter on your screen makes you uh, less things that you have to analyze, which should make you a better trader. So I'm going to give you a couple of tips here that should make trading easier for anyone that's just starting out. OK, so this is something that you should really look at. So let's look at a certain price section. Um, let's go with something recent. So right here, this was the last uh, major move uh, right here from here to here. All right. So let's let's put some. Um, let's put some uh, lines here and box this in. Put a line there and then the high was made here. So let's put a line there. All right. So let's look at this section. And this is this is my first tip. Trading is very difficult. And if you're looking at the trend and the trend will tell you that it's up, you're only looking for up and you're going to miss a ton of moves and you could be on the wrong side of the trade all the time, you know, because you're, you're looking for an uptrade. And what if you're in a retracement, you know, and, and the job is to learn um, the market direction. For example, if you were going to walk to California, you don't get to California walking just, you know, you don't, you don't instant transmit from, you know, DC to California. No, you take a step and the market is the same way. If it's, if ultimately it's going to end up in California, that means you're going to take more steps West than you're going to take East. So this is the same thing with the market. When the market decides it wants to go up, Where's my where's the drawing tool? OK, so when the market decides it wants to go up, it's going to go up so far. It's going to come down so far and it goes up. And this is what. This is what markets that this is what an uptrend looks like, right? It's it's more steps up than it is steps backwards. Sometimes you're going to take three steps forward, two steps back, three steps forward two steps back, two steps forward, two steps back, six steps forward. It's the the market will take larger steps forward. That's trend. OK. And direction. That's trend. Right. But you need to know the steps that you're taking. Is it part of the forward movement? Or the backwards movement? Am I going west to California? Am I walking back east to D.C.? You need to know which is which. And that's if you simplify trading, that's all it is. You have to determine your bias. And I call it market polarity. If the polarity is to the upside, that means any downward move in that market, I'm going to consider that stepping back east, back to D.C. That's ultimately going to go back the other way. So now my job becomes once I've picked my direction and there's tools that you can use to determine that direction. Once I pick my direction. Any move going the other way, I'm going to start measuring it because the longer it goes the wrong way, the closer it is to turning around and going the right way. OK, so let's uh, let's look at a chart and I'll give you an example. So this is this is this is a uh, Walgreens and we're going to look at this move up. So you're looking at one, two, three, four. You got five months where price went pretty much up. All right. So let's let's, dro let's drop down to a weekly chart and look at the same time frame. OK. Here's the same time frame on a weekly chart. All right. 
Now, I use um, I use a different. Um, I'm not going to get into that in this video, but I would have determined that the market polarity changed on this candle right here, July 23rd, the week of July 23rd, 2018. The polarity of the market would have changed to up for me. Okay. At this point, right here, I am now measuring the steps because I'm looking at the steps because remember, I think the market direction is up. Now, I can be wrong. My The trading strategy that I use is right 60 to 70 percent of the time. Right. So I can be wrong. I'm really wrong about direction, though, because, you know, I, I use a very robust uh, direction determining system. But there's there's a, you know, that doesn't mean you're going to win your trade. But I, I digress. So in this situation, on this candle, we have determined that the market direction is now up. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start measuring from here. Once that up move starts to to the highest point before it starts going back the other way. Uh, I don't have the magnet on. Let me turn the magnet on. Okay, so there to here. All right, so let's zoom in on a daily chart for that area. So that puts me, that area that we highlighted, the trend that was determined to be up on this candle here, the 23rd. See, here's here's the 23rd. We determined, you know what, the, the direction of the market is up. So we measured from the low point of where that move started to the high point. And at this point, any steps down, in my opinion, my 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 bias are just steps back east to D.C. Remember, we're going to California. You know, up is, is our California. And these steps backwards here, the longer they go down, the closer it is to the term it turn to the time that it turns around. So with my bias, I would have been looking to buy in this area here. Me personally, my. Uh, wow, how to get up there. OK. So right here. My bias became up. When we get to this area, the, the longer we've gone down, the more likely that it is that it's going to turn around and go the other way. In my opinion, that's my bias. And you have to you, you have to live with that. Sometimes you're right. Sometimes you're wrong. That's where your money management, all that kind of stuff comes into play. But the, the thing is to pick a bias and the market will tell you what the market's bias is through price action. And we'll get into that into a later day. But the first thing I would say to any new novice trader out there is um, make the market more simple for yourself. It's really hard to analyze all of this data. You know, that's, that's why top down analysis is so important. It's it's difficult to, to make sense of this. What direction is this? What is, where is this going? No, I determined right here the market direction is up. So in this section on this is the candle that we just zoomed in on. This is the candle right here. This little doji is the spot where we were looking to buy and look what happened. We would have bought. And you know what's ironic? Look at the next step. So from that doji to the next high would be the next area that you're looking at if you're going to keep a buy bias. And and look at where price turned around on that one. Why it keeps going way up there. Look what price did. So here's the first one. Came up, looked to buy. Came up, looked to buy. Reverse. It's not going to work forever. Eventually up here, um, it failed. Right here, and you you you, you got a reverse signal and it went the other way. But there's there's telltale signs to to work that and trade that as well. Yeah, I'm not going to get into that in this video. But the first thing I can say to you is, make it more simple. Don't try and trade the entire chart. You know, trade a section at a time, learn how to piece off the sections, and then you only have to manage a small portion of this. You know, when when you when you um, when you break off this section here, you're looking for two things. You're looking you're looking for con continuation up. So you're looking to buy at the area that says, you know, it's gone too far in the wrong direction. If it if it invalidates that area and goes back the other way, then you don't take a trade. 
And if you're already in a trade, you make sure you use good money management. You lost the trade and you move on to the next one. You're going to lose. There's, there's no strategy that's going to be right. I mean, everything works some of the time, but nothing works all of the time in trading. So um, let's let's relate that back to the charts we were looking at. Here's SPY. We had a big move down on a weekly chart. Price has been going up and up and up. Typically, historically, this is your sell zone where the sellers are going to re-enter the market. We're not quite there yet, but I've got downward triggers on most of the um, stocks, individual stocks on my watch list. This is the, 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 the entire ETF as a whole. So there does look to be some room to the upside and I could get stopped out on some of the trades that I'm in. I have some trades that are open in a short position. Um, but my bias and the risk reward ratio is to the downside. So I, I feel as though the market should go down, but I could be wrong. Right. So money management, um, entry rules, confirmation rules, things like that. But my bias is I think it's down. I, I know my bias is down as far as the trades. Um, we'll see how those work out. We'll do a review at the end of the week and maybe I'll share a couple of trades and see how they turned out. But for new traders, um, Learn how to compartmentalize the chart. Don't try and trade the entire chart. The long term direction being up or down is somewhat irrelevant if you only have a two day window or time horizon that you're trying to take your trade. So you, you want to make it match um, and you can zoom in even further. But I, I will tell you, the further in you go, day trading is the most is the most difficult aspect to trading. The further you zoom in the more nuanced skill you need to have in trading the market the more quickly you need to be able to maneuver. Um, and you need to have tools, you know, you need to have tools to enter your trades. Um, like this, for example, for me, this is what I use. If I want to enter a trade, this tells me what size position based on the stop loss size, my entry price, what kind of a multiplier. This is something I made up and it tells me exactly how many shares I should trade based on the account balance and things like that. So, um, you need to have tools. If you're going to day trade, you need a lot of tools. And it's, you know, we'll get into that some more later. But um, as far as today's market, I'm thinking um, my bias, I'm looking for shorts. I, I am a little concerned that SPY hasn't reached here. I mean, we QQQ, we're, we've already hit 61% retracement. Um, so uh, let me see. The Russell. I think the Russell has also hit the 61. So I'm getting a lot of downward trend triggers uh, on the individual stocks that I'm trading. So I'm thinking I'm, I'm thinking it's short, um, but, you know, SPY hasn't really hit the level. It's past 50 percent retracement, which is still a viable level for it to reverse. And that doesn't mean it's going to go down and make a new look, a new low. You know, the up move. Um, let's see. The up move on SPY could meet support here and push it further up. You know, so this is the thing about trading. You don't no one knows. I, if anyone tells you they know what the market's going to do, you're lying. <laughs> the job is um, it's not about predictability. It's about probability. And you, you want to historically back test whatever your strategy is and to find out what way you get the odds on your side for the most probable outcome. So I wouldn't be a buyer here because historically this is not a good spot to buy. This is a spot to sell. And the reasons for that, you know, I could talk for four hours on why, <laughs> but um, that's where I'm at. And that's what I'm looking at. So I'm looking for shorts on, 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 um, on most of the watch lists here in the stock market. My, my, uh, my stock list with, um, that have triggers for shorts or all these in red. Uh, there may be one buy on this whole list, but all of these I'm looking for shorts and they've already crossed levels where I'm looking to get in short on all of these stocks. And I, I, like I said, there may be one buy on here. So um, that's where we're at for today. Uh, we'll get back into, you know, maybe reviewing the market some more a little bit later in the week. Uh, I told you guys on the last video I was going to go live and you guys could show me which uh, chart you wanted me to look at. Um, we're not going to do that this week. We'll start that next week. Let's kind of build up a base of people that want to watch the videos and um, 
kind of just start talking about the market first and then we'll start going live and and uh, looking at the stocks. Plus, you'll get a chance to see how my analysis turns out. You know, I'm telling you one thing and let's let's see if it if it uh, if I'm making any sense. You know, proof of concept is always a good thing. So uh, if you like the video, please like it. Uh, subscribe to the channel. We're going to be making a ton of these videos. I'm on the market every day. I've been up since 5 a.m. And um, I'm just now making the video because I had to get the kids off to school. I'm still in the country for now. Uh, I don't leave for a couple more weeks. So it'll be uh, I'll probably make these videos a little later in the morning like now uh, because I have the kids here and I have to get them to school, stuff like that. So, um, yep, yeah, um, I'm around. Follow the videos and you guys have a wonderful day. We'll see what it does. Thanks.